What's going on there guys? Good afternoon. Good Saturday afternoon. It is the weekend of May 7th, 2022 is the date about 1.24 uh, p.m. Not a.m. P.m. California time. And the latest quake out there on the Earthquake 3D globe shows some movement out in Puerto Rico with a 2.1 earthquake. The latest quake on that uh, Earthquake 3D globe. Check it out, the flat scale map out here, the last 24 hours of 2.5 and above for the states, 4.0 for international national communities. Show some movement up here at the very end of the Kurokamachaka Trench. Seen that happen within the last couple hours of 5.0 uh, there within our watch zone. This area has been uh, awfully quiet in terms of anything above, uh, above 6.0 in quite a while. So we're watching that pretty closely for some subsequent movement. Uh, also some activity down here along the Mariana Trench and also over here around the East China Sea. This one here, Mariana Islands area, seeing a 204 deep, 204 kilometer deep, 5.4. So some significant deep movement here. And this whole Philippine plate is, has actually been surrounded by deep movement. Over the last seven days or so, we can go back the last couple weeks and uh, see the activity that's been up and down the trench regions. A lot of deep activity over here around Taiwan and along the Philippines area. Uh, and the northern end of the Mariana Trench, also this area right here, seen a pretty good uh, cluster of quakes uh, in this area of the Mariana Islands. Uh, one area that still hasn't really moved all that much, and that, that's in terms of 4.0 and above, is this area southward here. So, gotta watch it. There's definitely accumulated stress here in this region. How much? Uh, uncertain, but uh, definitely it is building in that area as well. Solomon Islands and to the southeast, a little bit of activity throughout the morning and late last night. Uh, Solomon Islands seeing a 5.2 here just a little bit ago and then a 4.5 uh, looks like a few hours prior to that. So some movement definitely ramping up here around Solomon Islands with continued deep activity here around the Tonga Trench and the Kermadec Trench area south of Fiji. This area right here seeing a uh, 4.5 at 526 kilometers down there. This area right here also has seen quite a bit of deep movement and this is just the last seven days or so. Uh, look at some of the depths here of these earthquakes. Talking five, I think we even seen uh, one close to 600 kilometers and a lot of times they do happen within this zone uh, but uh, 596 kilometers for that 4.5 uh, just a couple days ago uh, the deepest one so far but uh, you can get definitely can get much further down there than that uh, western coast part of the activity uh, a little bit of movement happening up here around the Cascadia subduction zone we have been watching this here um, well last night it kind of picked up a little bit in the deeper range today uh, looks like some twos in the shallow range, about seven kilometers down there. This area did see some movement, uh, like I mentioned, into the deeper areas of the Cascadia subduction zone with a couple quakes here uh, down there around 30 kilometers. So uh, getting some movement and uh, ultimate pressure still continuing on the southern end of the Cascadia subduction zone. I want to show you guys the trimmer map from last night. Uh, we'll pop over here to the trimmer. And uh, we had about 57 epicenters of tremor last night, mainly into the Northern California area, Southern Oregon region. Now this line, you can kind of draw a line right here uh, as the Southern end, the Southern boundary of the Cascadia subduction zone. And it extends right where the tremor activity is occurring. And uh, a lot of times these tremors here, when we see massive amounts of them, they do apply upward stress up, upstream, so to speak along the further locked areas as you get uh, towards the locked area of the Cascadia subduction zone which is further up north well I shouldn't say north but upstream if you get what I'm saying there uh, from the uh, down dip of this trimmer so um, we did see some activity there last night and that's kind of what we're seeing today and last night with that subsequent movement uh, upstream in this area of northern California the rest of California some movement around the Bay Area uh, but then look at this, Eastern Sierra Nevada, once again, awfully quiet, folks. Very, very quiet. And today, Southern California, quiet as well. Um, just about 12 earthquakes or so in this area of the Pacific Plate, North American Plate, of course, over here on the plate boundary side. This is the San Andreas Fault here that runs through the Desert Hot Springs area. And down into the Salton Sea, where we're seeing a couple small earthquakes around the Westmoreland area. 
Uh, north of Brawley, um, 1.6 and a 1.0, 13 kilometers for at least one of them. Um, I want to see if this has been reviewed or not. Nope, automatic status still. So I'm sure that will get upgraded or uh, figured out for that depth there. It just seems uh, pretty deep. Start seeing some, some uh, deeper earthquake activity along the southern section of the uh, San Andreas Fault Zone here, then we've got to watch out and maybe worry about possibly something looming. Of course, there's always that looming threat, right, of the big one out here on the southern southern end of the San Andreas Fault. So, a little bit dry out here today, again, here in California. I don't like the, I don't like the dryness that's out here. I, I prefer the heat with humidity. I know that sounds odd, but I'm a big fan of weather, and i got to have moisture in, moisture in the air uh, to feel to feel like I'm breathing right. Kind of just dries me out out here. Uh, Idaho, some movement up here into the mountain ranges, northern part, or in through uh, Montana, I should say, into the part of the uh, northern Rocky areas. Just a handful of quakes. Yellowstone looks pretty quiet. Let's go ahead and bounce over there real quick, see what we got uh, kicking up. And uh, there's not a whole lot. I was looking at this activity earlier up here in the Pelican Cove mirror lake plateau area and uh, i'm uncertain on if this is earthquake activity just due to these signatures here they don't look like earthquakes and it's obviously not uh, volcanic but they just don't look like uh, a seismic signature of an earthquake even though they're showing up on both of these stations i'm not seeing it observed on any of these other ones so uh, this one right here though i believe that one's a well-defined quake but uh, these other ones, I, it just, I don't know what they are. Some type of technical glitches, I believe, in that area. And as far as distinct uh, separate swarming going on here, I, I, not a whole lot. Yellowstone's been pretty quiet uh, for, for a little while now. Uh, let's see what else we got. Back to the USGS map here. Some movement into the interior part of the states. Oklahoma area, Southern Plains. Some movement uh, outside of OKC and the... Uh, what do we got down there? Ardmore area, north of Ardmore. Got to get back out there, man. The storms are, storms are passing me up. I got to get back out there and storm chase them pretty soon here. Arkansas, look at this. 2.4, 20 kilometers deep into the New Madrid zone. Outside of uh, Manila, Arkansas. Let's see if this has been reviewed. Uh, it has been reviewed, so that's rather deep there. But then again, these fault systems along the New Madrid zone are, are typically fairly deep into this area not uh, any type of uh, surface features or surface fractures for the most part just due to all the sediments and whatnot uh, that has been laid atop these uh these old very old fault systems here uh let's see eastern part of the country looks pretty clear uh puerto rico this is a region that we've seen on the globe here noticing a little increase in activity including a 2.1 southwestern portion of puerto rico here uh, aside from that, uh, no major significant movement in the Puerto Rico area. Uh, and for the most of the Caribbean plate, it looks pretty clear. A uh, little activity off Guatemala, uh, Guatemala coast and the Panama coast as well. That activity from late last night. South America region, seeing some activity in the, to the Peru-Chile Trench once again. Again, most of this from yesterday. It looks like we had one this morning, a 4.4 at 120 kilometers down into the subduction area of this zone right here the peru chile trench uh, what, you guys notice one area we haven't seen too much movement is down here in the south sandwich islands area it's been awfully uh, awfully quiet seven days of activity shows looks like we had one looks like maybe two here back on the second but uh for the past five days here it's been awfully quiet nothing to report in that area uh, let's see what else we got. I think that's about it here, folks, for the uh, USGS map. Um, Earthquakes Canada, I don't believe we have too much going on up there, but I do like to cover uh, the areas to the north. And it looks like the earthquake here from yesterday, outside of Quebec here, 1.3 was the latest quake on the Earthquakes Canada map. Uh, solar weather activity. I'll see if anything's kicking up here again. I know we're kind of waiting on some uh, movement, not movement, but uh, flare activity. And it uh, looks like these guys, these guys still have not uh, adjusted their current uh, flare threat. I don't, I strongly, strongly believe 
that we're not looking at a 25% chance of a next flare. I believe that is, uh, has not been updated. Uh, looking at the dynamics of these systems here, um, 3006 doesn't have a whole lot of potential here in the polarities of the fields. 3004, about the only one, but even at that, not anything that would uh, require a 25% uh, X flare possibility. Maybe an M flare, maybe an M flare. Uh, from this act from that uh, sunspot right there but uh, like i said they just sometimes it sometimes they update it kind of slow out there but i do appreciate the solarham.net website is pretty resourceful and uh, pretty nicely laid out there's all sorts of space weather sites that you can visit uh, um, we got space weather live spaceweather.com and all of these basically have their own little uh, measurements and whatnot to where you can see the uh, current indexes of uh, the KP and also the chances of uh, auroras, the probability forecasts. So uh, and it's kind of cool. I mean, this one's pretty neat as well. Kind of gives out the solar wind speed currently in the KM, which is very low, by the way. And the interplanetary magnetic field uh, looks like around a four or five bouncing up here within the last couple hours uh, for the BT uh, NT section. South tilt is right here on the bottom. Uh, solar wind density particles here not uh, not a whole lot we did have some kick up here a little bit uh, earlier but uh, yeah I mean it's like I say each one has their own little site uh, and I kind of use a couple of them whatever I feel like using at the moment but I tend to stick to the uh, solarham.net uh, site just click on these images here and you can see uh, certain features of the Sun kind of gives the dynamics here of the uh, the sunspots even though they're big right now, there's just not a whole lot of potential. There has been some talk about this sunspot out here on the southeastern limb. It will be rotating in the view here in the coming days towards Earth, but uh, I don't know. I can't really see. It's not really doing anything at the moment, not really crackling with uh, too much flaring at the moment. And if you look at the solar flare detection chart, we're down there. We're only getting maybe a, a low C flare every once in a while. Uh, so. It is what it is. Sunspots come and go. All it takes is one big one, though, right, to cause some havoc here on Earth. Uh, but uh, for now, clear, beautiful day, at least here in California. All right, guys, I am going to bounce out of here. Nothing else going on. Uh, we will be uh, back tonight uh, with an update, uh, hopefully with a question and answer show here with Missy Mimi's. I believe she will be here for that. And uh, then we will go from there. Like I said, this activity, you gotta remember on the globe here, folks, all the deeper activity down here. And uh, and now we're starting, like I say, we're starting to see a little bit of shallow movement up here at the very corner of this watch zone. And if you watch my videos, you'll know that I've been talking about this for a while. Yes, the Japan Trench has been hit. That was our watch area for a little while. Uh, that did get hit with a um, pretty good sized earthquake just a short time uh, a while back here. But this area right here, along the Pacific Plate. Uh, definitely something to watch pretty closely. And uh, of course down here as well, New Zealand area northward along the Kermadec Trench. So either way, um, you know, it's just that we kind of watch these quiet zones and, and make uh, little uh, remarks on them. And uh, eventually they do happen. I mean, I could sit here all day and say there's gonna be an earthquake in California for the next 50 years. And eventually they will come, right? But we do try to point out these uh, little quiet zones that we look for uh, that could be telltale signs of something uh, about ready to happen. But then again, right, San Andreas Fault. Been quiet for how many years now? The southern end? Now, I'm not talking about the Bay Area or Northern California. I'm talking about that section runs from about Salton Sea northward a little bit uh, towards the San Bernardino Mountains. That section right there, it's been uh, awfully quiet for, uh, what, 300 and something years now? More than that, so just a matter of time folks and then that uh, big one will be will be uh, a yesterday's thought or, or you just never know all right guys have a good day i'm out of here we'll be monitoring the live stream by the way the stream did go down last night i had somebody out here i don't know if they were drinking or driving but they hit a power pole and knocked down the power uh to the uh to the live stream just for a short time the rest of the town was out uh, without power for a little while, but uh, I had power here, surprisingly, just a little blink of a power switch, which was uh, enough to uh, 
knock out the stream, the router, but uh, I did manage to get it back up and running and we're running live now on the live stream. And again, we'll be back later with Missy Mimi's and a question and answer show tonight around uh, probably about 7 p.m. West Coast time. Have a good day, folks. Enjoy this beautiful Saturday. We'll chat you guys very soon.